Do you want to learn the step-by-step -step to set up the best workflow for developing multi-service apps? Keep watching. Hello, I'm Al and welcome to the Tilt channel. In the previous video, we talked about five benefits that using Tilt brings you. You're going to have one, two, and three for free as soon as you set things up. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to set up Tilt and then we're going to go into more detail about feedback loop automation and creating custom functionality. But first, we need to go over a few fundamentals. The five main concepts are the tilt file, and that's how you tell tilt about your whole application. Part of that is going to be telling tilt how to build your container images and how to deploy them to your cluster. Then we're going to discuss the blob data type, which is important when you're creating your own functionality. And lastly, we're going to go over the concept of resources as it applies to Tilt. Let's start with the Tilt file. The Tilt file is executed on startup, and that is how you tell Tilt about how your whole application works. This is what a typical Tilt file looks like. You have functions like Docker build that build container images. You have functions like KTML, and this tells Tilt about all of your Kubernetes manifests. There are some extras here that we're going to look at in a minute. And these are all built-in functions. Tilt files are written in Starlark. That is a dialect of Python. So if you're used to Python, you can use most of the techniques you're used to to manipulate data and functionality inside your tilt file. As you can see in this more advanced tilt file, here I'm using functions, I'm defining a special function. I'm using a for loop, I have variables, I have ifs. So in the tilt file, you can use general programming techniques to create automation and functionality as necessary. This makes tilt a lot more extensible than the typical configuration file where every option needs to be hard-coded up front. To build container images, you're going to use the docker build function. It requires a name and it requires a file path. It expects there to be a file called docker file under this path, and if there isn't, then I need to specify that the docker file for that image actually goes by this name, and I do that with this docker file argument. There are a few other arguments I can use. For example, only says that under this file path, I should only use these files to build this docker image. There are a few extras other than only in docker file, and you can check those in the documentation. When it's time to deploy services with Kubernetes, I have a few options, but I'm generally going to use the KTML function. I can use it like this, where I pass each service in individually, and these are all Kubernetes manifests, or I can just pass them all as one big lump like this. It works with images that I built myself, for example, Glitch, we just built up above, and Frontend, we just built up above, and it also works with external images like this one that's just going to be fetched from a container registry. The KTML function can be called in many different ways. You can just use one static file, you can use many files, you can call it multiple times, and you can also call sub-functions that will generate your Kubernetes manifest from other tools, and here we're showing Customize and Helm. In this example, uh, in my more advanced tilt file, I'm calling KTML on a local execution of a shell script that I wrote myself. And this shell script generates the Kubernetes manifest and outputs that, and that then gets passed to my KTML function. And this brings us to the next topic, and that is blobs. So in tilt files, you're gonna have two types of string. One is the built-in string type, and the other is blob. So why the difference? Some functions like docker build, KTML, they can take two different types of data. One is the data itself, and the second is a file path to a file where the data actually lives. So when you pass in the path to a Docker file, it's going to open that file and take that data and use that data. But I could also just write the data by hand in the tilt file and pass that to the function. So how does the function know whether what it's looking at is a path or the actual data? And that distinction is done with blobs. So let's look at this example. When I pass these arguments to my KTML function, they're strings. When I read a file uh, and I put the contents of the file in memory, the output of this is a blob because Tilt assumes that if you read a file, the contents of the file are the actual data and not more paths to where a file is. 
So if I want to type the whole string by hand, this is going to have the type string, of course, but to pass it to KTMO and say this is the actual data, then I wrap it as a blob. Okay, last topic, resources. A resource is a bundle of work that is managed by tilt. This can come from a single function, for example, a special resource that you crafted, or it can come from a combination of different functions, for example, a combination of building a Docker image and using a Kubernetes manifest to deploy that. The reason Tilt can group some of these together is to make it easier for you to track their status and errors if they happen. Here in the web UI, each item you see on this menu to the right is a separate resource. Some of them come from a single call on your Tilt file, for example, flush database is a single function here that generates a resource. Other resources like this one are the result of multiple function calls in your Tilt file. For example, glitch comes from a Docker build call and a KTMO call. Okay, now you know the fundamentals of how all of this works. So let's start setting it up for this example. Let's start first with just a Docker file, a single Docker file, and a single Kubernetes manifest, and let's see how that looks like. So let's start with a Docker build function. I need to pass it a name, and that's going to be frontend, and a location, and that's going to be dot slash frontend. Okay, and now I'm going to give tilt my Kubernetes manifest, and that's going to be the KTML function. And if I recall correctly, that's at frontend slash KTML. So let's, let's bring up the tilt UI and see this in action. So here's my front end. You can see that it was built, deployed, and all of that, but so far I can't, I can't access it from outside the cluster, and I only have one service. So let's add another one. So let's do docker build again, and this is the glitch service. It lives in the same directory as the tilt file, and the docker file isn't just called docker file, it has a different name. So let's specify that, and I need commas, all over here. And this service has a special parameter. I'm specifying that I don't want all files in here, I want just a few. So I'm gonna give it the glitch directory, I'm gonna give it the render API directory, that's a dependency. I'm gonna give it my go modules and my vendor directory. Now let's do another KTML call to glitch slash KTML. And here it is. It was very fast because it was already cached, so Tilt didn't have to build it. Normally it would take a couple seconds. And lastly, I'm gonna add a Kate's resource call, and this lets me specify some special parameters of a resource. And I just wanna specify that the front end should have a port forward so that I can access it from outside the cluster. And this is gonna go to 3000. So here it is. Let's see what my application looks like so far. I can access my front end, I can select a picture, and I can apply the glitch service to it. And it's probably gonna work, but all my other services are still missing. So I'm gonna add those real quick, and then we're gonna come back here. Okay, so I wrote this in a way that takes a bit less space, and here are all the other services that my app has. I also need a port forward for my storage service, and I'm gonna show you why in just a minute. So I'm gonna save this, and let's see what that looks like. So Tilt has built and deployed all of the other services, and if I come back here, now I can use all my other functionality and there you go, it looks a bit scary, but well, it's just an example. So now that this is all set up, you already get a bunch of those benefits we mentioned before. So right now it's very easy for anyone to spin up the whole application, they just need to start up Tilt. It's also very easy for anyone to spot errors if they happen, because you can see your whole app at a glance and any errors that occur are going to be visible right here. What's happening now is that Tilt is monitoring all of those files, and if any of those changes, Tilt's going to update the service inside your container. But the default behavior is not as fast as I showed you on the previous video. By default, when a file changes, Tilt's going to rebuild the image of that service. It's going to push the image to a registry. It's going to tell Kubernetes to fetch that image, and then Kubernetes needs to spin up that whole service again. 
All of that takes some time. Instead, we're going to use Live Reload. What Live Reload is going to do is it's going to sync only what's changed into a container that is already running. We're not going to build a new container, we're not going to push or pull anything, and we don't need to restart a Kubernetes resource. The container is running and we're simply going to sync some files from localhost into the container inside the cluster. So we can, for example, give it a new binary to run and it just restarts in place, or we can give it source code and it can recompile in place, or if it's a dynamic language, it simply restarts. Sounds complicated, but it's simpler than you think. Let me show you. All right, so let's set up Live Reload for one service here, and this is one that we had set up before, and I expanded it into multiple lines again. So let's see what Live Reload looks like. The way it works in practice is that it is simply an argument to my Docker build function, and the argument is actually live update, and it has a sync function and a few others that we're not going to discuss now. But what I do is basically I tell it sync the local folder on localhost with this name, with the folder um, with this name inside my container. And that is pretty much it. So, so now Toast is going to update to have live reload enabled. I can come to my app and I can use a glitch function here. And this is what it looks like. And I can come here and change what my glitch service does. So instead of this filter that's selected here, I'm just going to select another one. If I come back here and I run this again, you can see that it was a different filter. And on my tilt dashboard, I can see a file change was detected on main.go and main.go on the glitch directory on localhost was synced with the main.go on the app slash glitch directory inside the container. So this is how you set up Live Reload. It is pretty simple, but really powerful. All right, we're almost there. Now, last trick of the day. How do you add your own custom functionality to Tilt? Something that you need yourself that is maybe exclusive to your own application that no one else could have thought of, that no one at Tilt could know you could possibly want, but you need that thing. So how can you implement that and make it work with Tilt? For that, Tilt's gonna offer you two functions. One is called loco, and loco is gonna run a local command when the Tilt file is executed. So maybe you need to run a shell script, maybe you need to run a tool or anything you'd like, you can run that when the tilt file is executed, when you first start up tilt. But sometimes you need some functionality to be there and available anytime, not just on startup. And that is local resource. So that's going to be a resource. It's going to sit there on your dashboard and you can rerun it whenever you'd like and you can make it be triggered by certain specific actions. So let's set up an example with local resource right now. And afterwards, I'm gonna show you some more advanced examples using just a local function. So let's get started. Like I showed you in the previous video, I have a history of all the image manipulation that I've done here. And let's say for some reason, I want to be able to flush my database uh, pretty often. And Tilt doesn't give me a way to do that. And I wanna add a little button here that I can just click refresh on. And I want so that whenever I click that button, my database is going to be flushed. All right, so the function we need is called local resource. And it takes, the first argument it takes is just a name. So flush database. The second argument is the command that I need to run. So I'm going to just do curl local, oops, localhost 8080 on the flush endpoint because I already configured my storage service to be able to receive that. Not saying you should do this in production, it's just an example. And this resource is gonna depend on another resource being up and running, and that's gonna be the storage, not storage, the storage, the storage service. So if I come back here onto my tilt dashboard, I now have a flush database. So if I come here and look at my history again, it already ran because it runs when I enable it. And if I try and put something else in my history, now this is in my history and I can come here again and flush my database once more. And if I click history, it's empty, no images in storage. So this is a very simple example of how to create custom functionality because I can basically shell out to any command in my system. So here's a more advanced example and you can find this on the full version of this example project. Here I am dynamically generating YAML files 
and Docker files for all of my services. And the way I do that is I make a call to a local function and that's simply gonna execute my shell script. It's gonna pass me some environment variables that are gonna tell me which Docker files to generate. So this is a more advanced usage. Don't worry if it doesn't make sense right away, but I think this one should be pretty clear and you can start using it uh, right now. Experience has shown us that these functions allow users to almost infinitely expand what Tilt can do for them. This way, you can adapt Tilt to your workflow and not the other way around, which should make things a lot easier for you. In this video, we learned the basic concepts of Tilt. We saw how to set it up, how to optimize it for faster refresh time, and how to add our own custom functionality to it. You're now ready to use Tilt for your own projects. Check out tilt.dev for more information and don't hesitate to reach out to us if you need a hand. I hope this was helpful and thank you for watching.